Welcome to the Australian Property Investment Podcast with your host, Aaron Christie David. Each episode, we ask an expert to share their key insights for aspiring investors to make confident property choices. G'day, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Australian Property Investment Podcast, all about helping you make better property choices. I'm Aaron Christie David, founder of Atelier Wealth a mortgage broking business specializing in helping property investors. Every week, we get to speak to leading investors, uh, specialists in their field, to ask them the big, the three biggest questions that investors ask us. Uh, this week, we're talking avoiding fatal mistakes when it comes to buying a property that maybe has building and pest issues because we're joined by Damien Bleeker from Southwest Property Inspections. G'day, Damien. How you doing? Good, yourself. Excellent. Thanks, mate. Excellent. Uh, mate, lovely to have you here. Uh, mate, I want to bring you on because building and pest inspections is one of maybe one of the overlooked parts when it comes to buying a property. I think people, you know, investors get really excited about buying a property. Um, you know, they'll spend maybe upwards of half a million dollars looking to buy a property, right? So we'll talk through what's actually involved in it. But I want to take a, take a step back a little bit and just talk through uh, talk through your experience, mate. You've got 18 years in the building game, so I'm sure, you, I'm sure you've seen a lot in your time, mate. Talk us through what's um, what's inspired you to go out on your own and start Southwest Building Inspections, mate. Yeah, so um, like I said, I've been in the industry for 18 years. Um, I was on the merry-go-round of local government, um, wasn't really enjoying what I was doing. Yep. Um, had a friend get uh, buy an investment property, get some um, poor advice on a building and pest inspection, which uh, cost him dearly. Yeah. Um, and it sort of made me think about what I wanted to do, and I thought I could go out and use my experience to provide a better service and um, you know, back to the community and uh, provide some you know good information and you know to, to people buying homes. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. So talk me through this. So your mate buys a property. Um, what were the issues that he encountered? Yeah, so he bought the property, got a building and pest inspection, yeah. um, which you know good for him to do. Um, unfortunately, it failed to uh, identify some water issues in his uh, bathroom. Yeah. So the moment um, he moved, or he didn't move in, but the moment he moved in um, to start, you know, uh, yeah, doing the place up, yeah. um, the bathroom flooded into the subfloor. Um, so on further investigation, he found out that he had um, waterproofing issues, subfloor damage, and the likes, which uh, cost him twenty thousand dollars to repair before he could actually wow. tenant the property. Yeah, so already in the hole for twenty grand plus, exactly. taking out a loan perhaps to cover that as well. Yeah, well, yeah, he had yeah. to get a loan, and it uh, really ruined his um, return on invested capital for the next couple of years because he had the mortgage to pay as well as the uh, the personal loan he had to get to repair yeah. the damage. Yeah, so I think these stories kind of stick out a little bit. So what we want to do is say, why well, prevention is probably a little bit better than cure. In fact, it's a lot better than cure. Uh, so how do we avoid these fatal mistakes, mate? So we're gonna we're gonna kind of punch through a couple of questions, mate, and and talk you through that. So. Your trained eye, I mean, we're talking about 18 years in the building game. So if you're going out to a property, what are you looking for? Okay, so we're looking for anything that may cost the purchaser short-term and long-term. So current damage to the property, current dilapidation, um, as well as items, conducive conditions that may cause damage later on down the track. We go through a process um, and provide a comprehensive report yeah. so that they get a clear idea of what they're buying, um, the issues they're facing when they and if they buy it, and you know what it may cost them to um, to fix up if they decide to go through with it, and you know the, the ongoing cost of the, the property. Okay. So what's actually in? Yeah, talk us through a typical report. For example, what are you covering off in there? Okay, so a typical report is a building and pest inspection. We we conduct both on the one. Uh, inspection. Yeah. So you're looking at building defects, you know, the usual uh, dilapidated roof, dilapidated bathrooms, the likes, um, both minor damage, major damage, okay. as well as a pest inspection. So you're looking for uh, termites, uh, borers, and rot. Um, so they're, you know, three of the main uh, issues that can cause major cost to a, a person, you know, to buying so a buying. property. Yeah, so when you're doing a report, what is a deal breaker? I mean, I, sometimes I see people um, pull out for a, for a building and pest report, and maybe they're you know avoiding buying a lemon, for example, or buying something that has future issues with the building. Or you know, I think Queensland gets quite a lot of termite issues, for example. Um, 
So in your, I guess in your trained opinion, what what are deal breakers, and what can, and on the flip side to that is, what can be fixed, for example? So major red flags for investors, especially are the termites. Obviously, um, they if there's been termite activity, the actual level of damage is unknown. Right. So you might, you know, might have been lucky and get a, a minor amount of damage, or they may have run through the entire you know property without tearing plaster off the walls. You know, you just don't know. Right. So that's probably the biggest red flag. Yeah. Uh, waterproofing issues are a big red flag for people because they have a detrimental effect, and the cost to repair damage from waterproofing bathrooms and the like can be quite costly. Generally, a full bathroom renovation, you know, is is necessary. Right. So they, yeah, you know, that's a that's a big expense that people don't want to to go for, especially if they haven't budgeted for it. Mm. Um, other red flags would be the uh, any subfloor damage because any works to a subfloor, whether it bearers and joists rot, etc., sagging uh, or piers moved. Uh, it becomes very expensive very quickly because just sort of the confined spaces and you know the difficulty to to do that kind of work. And how do you? I mean, what tools? What what techniques? What equipment are you using that that uncovers some of these potential issues as well, mate? Yeah. So obviously the best the best uh, tools are your eyes and your ears. Yeah. Um, on top of that, we also use a uh, moisture meter for uh, walls around wet areas to identify any possible leaking into the walls. Uh, we undertake roof inspections, both single story and double story, using a drone, so right. that we can get a bird's eye view of the roof and get you know right up up close. Four K the technology guys have oh, it now. That's yeah. great. Four K footage. You know, you can zoom into, you can see that you know a single tile from a hundred meters away. It's crazy. Incredible. Um, and then we also have thermal cameras and the like. So if we suspect there's termite damage or termite activity, um, we can use that to to identify and, and clarify um, and confirm more so than actually using it as a scanning tool. Excellent. And that level, I mean, sophistication and eye for detail. I'm I'm not taking a pot shot at maybe your competitors, but maybe they just kind of glaze over the property a little bit, get in, get out. I mean, there's a level of care that you obviously bring to the table, but. Um, how would someone know that uh, their, view, their their inspectors given the same level of care that maybe you've talked about there? Um, my advice would be don't be afraid to uh, give your inspector a call before the inspection. Yep. Um, give them a bit of a grilling. Find out what their experience is. Find out if they've got actually any building experience because uh, under New South Wales regulations, we don't actually need to have any building experience to do the work. Yeah, right. right. Um, there's no... There's no um, no qualifications, yeah. no tickets. He actually requires that anyone can become a building and uh, building inspector. Pest, you do need some qualification, yeah. but the building sometimes you don't. Yep. Um, so definitely give them a call, give them a bit of a grilling. Good, do the good old Google review because people are very uh, honest on Google. Love it. Um, so you'll soon find if you've got an inspector who doesn't have great attention to detail, there'll be quite a few. You know, listings saying that they don't, um, you know, that things were missed, yeah. um, and vice versa. You, a good inspector, will come up with, you know, five stars and great attention to detail. Beautiful. And on that note about engaging uh, a building and pest inspector, who does that? Whose responsibility is it to appoint a building and pest inspector, and when is this done as well? So the person who is buying the property is their. It's their responsibility to uh, to do all their due diligence, um, inclusive of uh, hiring a building and pest inspector to give them the information they need. Yeah. Um, often it's organised through your conveyancer, okay. um, because they go hand in hand. Conveyancing and and the inspections go hand in hand. Yeah, great. Um, so often your conveyancer will have a building inspector that they work closely with. Yeah. Um, if they don't. Send them our way. Yeah. Um, other than that, um, your real estate agent may be able to uh, offer you somebody, or uh, once again, good old Google. Yeah. Um, Perfect, mate. Uh, and I guess your advice you've, you've come across multiple investors, uh, homeowners that are, that are engaging yourself. So if you're giving advice to maybe a new investor that's buying their first property and something comes up in the building and pest report, What's what's your general feedback to them as well? What's what to watch out for? What to be vigilant for as well? And what's going to be something to be aware of that you know that property that they're buying may have some potential risk there as well. Yeah. So following our inspection, we always give the uh, 
the purchaser a phone call because obviously the reports only ever focus on the negative. Yeah, correct. Um, which can be a little bit daunting if they're just reading, you know, a, a report which has got all the all these defects listed. There. What am I looking at? Here? Mm. But it's almost all the reasons to not buy the property. Exactly the right, and that, that's kind of what we're here. We're not here to turn around and say, "Oh, the property is beautiful," but you've got to put it in in context. So if they're looking at a forty or fifty year old property, yeah. you've got to, you know, one of our jobs is to say, look, yes, there are issues here, but they're going to be similar in every other house, you know, looking at this age um, and, and put it in context so that they can understand that they're, the house they're looking at, yes, it might cost them some money. Uh, there are issues there, but, you know, they're, they're not end of the world. And, but if they are really detrimental, it's about telling them, look, this is going to cost you a good amount of money mm. to repair um, so that they don't. Some people don't always read the hundred percent of the report. Yeah, sure. So give Let's it to the details. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. So give it to them firsthand. Yeah. Um, from the inspectors now saying these are the main issues you really need to think about. Um, and often, well, not often, but sometimes we've come across and just said, look, you really need to think about this property because it's going to cost you a lot of money. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it still gives them the opportunity to to purchase the property. Yeah. And it also gives them the opportunity to to possibly negotiate on the price. That's based exactly on, my based next on point. Just out. yeah, just going like that. You could literally flip it on its head and go, right, you could turn this into an opportunity to maybe knock some uh, knock some dollars off the purchase price, go back and negotiate that, you know, some of these things need to be rectified before you do buy it, for example. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and often, um, you know, they, they, they're in love with the property, they want to buy it, so they'll go back, do mm-hmm. a negotiation, maybe get a, you know, a bit of a discount. Everyone wins. They know yeah. what they're up for when they get the property, um, and the property still gets sold. Yeah. I love it. Thank you very much, mate, for being able to share your insights, your tips. It's it's super helpful. I say to anyone, um, you wouldn't spend half a million dollars on a car and not inspect it, test drive it. So why would you do the same with an investment property, right? So, um, exactly right. You, you've got to have someone that's trained, uh, someone has got a vested interest as well um, that's going to look after your, your nest egg, mate, your income-producing asset. Uh, Damien, mate, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, great to have you on and, and, and pick your brain, buddy. Um, if you found this episode helpful, we'd love your feedback. Please give us a review on iTunes or share with your friends and family. As we always say, anything that we've discussed on this show is of a general nature. So if you do uh, want to reach out to the team, we're hello at atelierwealth.com.au. Damien Bleeker runs Southwest Property Inspections. Damien's details will be in the show notes below. Thank you very much for your time and tuning in. Until next time, have a great one. Thanks. Thanks.